Hello, Michael L. Dublin Sr. with yet another installment on Jesus and anger and why it is so very critical to learn how to not be mastered by your anger and also how to truly live because anger, when it's not resolved, when it's not reduced, takes away from the quality of our lives. All of us want to love and to be loved. All of us want to have healthy relationships. But whenever we're always angry or consistently angry, it really takes away our capacity to have wholesome and healthy relationships, to be at peace within ourselves. This is why for those who are Christians, Jesus shared with us to forgive because if you don't, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. The principle here is that how can you possibly not look at people around you and what you have done and how that's negatively impacted them and yet you recognize the damage that it possibly have done so you ask God to forgive you but then you're not willing to forgive others. We want you to know and I want you to know but greater than that God wants you to know that holding on to your anger that causes you to have these relationships that are bitter broken, strained, you don't trust people, all of that's not grace, that's not mercy. And what it does is take away from, from you the life that God wants you to live. Just imagine the relationships you could have in your family, with your friends, your loved ones, in your church, or wherever you are, to be able to laugh and joke and be okay with yourself and to be okay with everybody as a lifestyle. Now, one of the key components of dealing with that is dealing with the myth of forgive and forget. The Bible in no way says for you to forgive and forget. In fact, there are some things that have been done to you. You better not forget them. And you better not forget what the person has done. That does not mean you can't forgive them. You still want to, to forgive them because they can't have that kind of power over you. But you don't want to spend the rest of your life remembering what they have done to the point that is that is detrimental but eventually if you forgive them it will not have the same power now i said earlier you don't want to forget there are some heinous things there are some very difficult things that have been done to us that should not be forgotten if it's uh, pressed or suppressed then that's that's not healthy either you don't want to suppress it some things you don't want to forget because you don't want to make those same mistakes, not with that person only, but with someone else. So there are things you learn from the consequences of what has happened that you do not want to forget. So don't put yourself in a position that you don't want to forgive because someone has told you that forgiveness means forgetting. It does not. But in time, as you live your life having forgiven the other person, they don't, that, that doesn't have mastery over you. You have the opportunity to be different and to do things different. Don't you want to be free? So remember that forgiveness is not forgive and forget, but it's also about letting the other person go from your heart and your mind so that you can be the person you need to be. I've been studying uh, and reading and ran across some reading on uh, Forgive for Good, a book by uh, Dr. Fred Luskin that gave nine practical steps for learning how to forgive. I suggest that you look at that book and forgive for good by uh, Fred Luskins. Now, I haven't read the whole book, but I did look at that list of nine ways to forgive. They're great personal steps or practical steps that will help you do whatever it is you need to do today. But remember, forgive and forget is not biblical. It's not helpful, except over a period of time when healing has taken place and you're much more matured. God bless you. Enjoy your life. Do not be mastered by anger.